So, John, um, tell us a little bit about the book. I will, uh, and uh, thanks to everyone for showing up this evening. Um, so, uh, let me tell you a short story. Uh, in April 1837, on the American frontier, two young men uh, met each other for the first time, and they became friends, lifelong friends, and their friendship uh, changed both of them and in some ways changed the course of American history. Uh, one of the men was a 23-year-old son of a large, uh, of the plantation owner of a large plantation in Kentucky. His father was a judge, a very well-known local figure, and he had left his home, left his family, and gone to make his way, as many young men and women, especially many young men, did at the time, made his way on the American frontier. The other uh, young man who was part of this meeting in April 1837 uh, was 28 years old, uh, unmarried, unattached, which was unusual for the time. He had failed at three or four jobs. He had been a flat boatman. He had been a, in his terms, an indifferent postmaster. He had been a failed shopkeeper. He had been a surveyor, which a job that he liked a lot until his surveying instruments got repossessed by the bank for his failure to pay the debts <laughs> of the uh, store that he owned that had failed. Uh, and he was uh, embarking on, indeed, on that very day of their meeting, uh, embarking on his fifth career, depending on how you count it. Uh, and he had uh, showed up to this meeting with all of his possessions in, his, in two saddlebags and unable to afford uh, $19 worth of bedding, uh, of mattress and sheets. And those two young men met on the American frontier in April 1837, the second of the two being Abraham Lincoln, uh, just arriving in Springfield, Illinois for the first time to start practicing law, and the first of the two being Joshua Speed, uh, who is the, uh, as I said, the young, the son of a wealthy plantation, slave-owning plantation owner from uh, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. So what I've told you is, a non, is the first chapter of my book and is nonfiction. That all happened. Uh, Lincoln came into Speed's store April, 18, April 15, 1837, looking for bedding. Speed said, I can give you a mattress and a, uh, a blanket and two pillows for $17. Lincoln said, I can't afford it. Can you offer me credit? Speed said, well, actually, I have an open berth in my bed upstairs. I have a double bed upstairs, and the fellow who was sleeping next to me in bed has just left. So there's an open berth because, as was not uncommon at the time, um, because real estate, I mean, land was cheap and plentiful in the West on the frontier, but houses, developed property, were scarce and expensive. And so it very often happened that especially unmarried uh, young men would share beds. And so Speed had a double bed, probably about this big, uh, that only, only one person was using, but there was room in the parlance at the time for two. And Speed said, why don't you go upstairs and check out that bed, see if you'd rather live there than me selling you this bedding that you can't afford. Lincoln walks upstairs, come back, comes back downstairs and says, well, Speed, we are met. And that's the start of a lifelong friendship. As I said, that's the first chapter of my book, which is a nonfiction chapter. And from that, uh, and from that uh, actual history, I've created a historical legal mystery story. So I've sort of envisioned Lincoln and Speed as sort of Holmes and Watson on the American frontier. Mm -hmm.